Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. So after a 11% run on the S&P 500 since that October low, actually a 12% run since the October low. The S&P 500 broke out above its downtrend line right here, has returned into bullish momentum. Uh, that was one big, big green candle going through that downtrend resistance and really hitting our first S&P 500 target here at around 3,900 points, corresponding to all these very, very important market reactions. Now, of course, clearing the downtrend line isn't everything. The S&P 500 is testing, as I just said, that 3,900 point resistance, which is still resistance. We haven't cleared that zone yet. We're gonna talk about that in just a second, but the focus of this video is going to be on high yield option adjusted spreads. So in other words, just credit spreads that have been rising throughout 2022, right? We've seen a rise in credit spreads, but nowhere to the extent of previous big bottoms in the market. Now, what is a credit spread? It's essentially a measure of the level of stress that's on the financial system and how elevated probabilities of defaults on credit are, especially low quality, high yield credit. How much yield are investors looking for, right? Look at this, uh, December of 2008, spreads were at all time highs, meaning that investors were seeking a record amount of yield to hold debt throughout this financial crisis. And that's definitely not the case today, right? And you can see throughout COVID at the COVID bottom at the 2015 bottom at the 2011 bottom, 2009 bottom, 2003 bottom. So a lot of very, very important bottoms. We saw the credit spread much higher. The stress on the financial system was much higher. And that is an argument that a lot of people have out there uh, that the correction is far from over. And, you know, I like highlighting these types of arguments because it hopefully gives you the information that's needed for you to have your own thought process regarding this information. And then of course, I give you guys my opinion. That's why you come to this channel. By the way, if you're not already subscribed, make sure to do so. We make these videos multiple times a week talking about financial markets, talking about opportunities in the markets. And of course, smash that like button if you do enjoy this video. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So before we dive into what's going on with the market and what the next big move is, I think looking at credit spreads in a little bit more detail is relevant, it's important. And going back to what we were saying, the big market bottoms throughout history have occurred with the level of stress on the financial system being significantly higher than current levels, right? We're at 4.8 on this indicator in 2003, was at 10. In 2008, it was at 22, 2015, almost at 10. And on this chart, I've put up the unemployment rate because I think that's pretty relevant to think about when we're talking about the level of stress on the financial system, right? Why would investors seek a higher yield on debt? It's because the probability of default is increasing, right? So it means you're in a recession. It's basically the market's way of saying, hey, there's a lot of risk out there. I'm willing to hold corporate debt, right? That's okay but I'm gonna ask for a very high yield because there's a lot of stress in the financial system. And so what produces that stress? What is really the core fundamental factor behind whether or not companies are going out of business? Well, I think the biggest coincident economic indicator is the unemployment rate, right? If unemployment is going up, it means that people are losing their jobs because investors are having a hard time keeping up with financial conditions. And so as businesses are doing very badly, the probability of defaults rises and the unemployment rate goes up, right? And that's what we've seen throughout the last 20 years. Every time you see the unemployment rate go up, you have credit spreads that rise. And so why am I talking about the unemployment rate? Because if we put a line right here at around the 10 mark, which is essentially the biggest spikes in credit spread that we have, the biggest amount of financial stress on the system that we've had. All of them occurred as the unemployment rate was going parabolic. That includes 2001 right here, 2002, 2008, as we just discussed, and COVID right here. All of these had unemployment rate skyrocketing. And so investors were very concerned about the ability of businesses to pay back their debt. Notice that the unemployment rate is not rising right now. Could it rise in the future? Yes, but that could take months, if not a year or two before we actually see a trend higher in inflation. 
that actually turns into a full-fledged recession between the middle of 2006 and the end of 2007, right? That was a year and a half where, yes, unemployment rate was gradually trending higher, but investors weren't all that worried. So if we remove this bar and we remove these episodes, they're not similar to today. We can't compare them to today. And we just look at the moments where credit spreads were rising while the unemployment rate was falling in a similar fashion to what we have today. And we have 1998 right there. We have a brief episode in 2005. We have an episode in 2011, unemployment rate was falling. 2015, right here, it was falling. So yes, some of these episodes were a little bit higher, but this really doesn't make the case that we should be expecting this level of stress on the financial system. At least that's not what we're betting on right now at gameoftrades.net. In fact, I wanna show you an interesting chart here, and it's very simply the 16 month moving average of the unemployment rate. Uh, and I find this fascinating because this is a signal that really puts things back into perspective. It's been very accurate at telling you, hey, we're in a risk off market environment, or hey, we're in a risk on market environment. And let me put up the S&P 500 on top of this chart so that you guys see what I'm talking about here. As the unemployment rate is trending below the moving average, you have the market moving higher. That's kind of the concept behind this chart. And you can see between 1992, great moment to be in the market, right up until December 2000, you were in a risk on market environment according to this indicator. Again, between 2003, right there. And June of 2007, that was a beautiful timing of this bull run here. Risk on market environment, then the unemployment rate flipped back into bullish momentum, right? Unemployment rate is rising and you would have sidestepped this entire recession, essentially, where the unemployment rate was rising, financial stress on the market was rising, and these credit spreads that we just talked about had a much higher chance of actually going a lot higher and seeing the market, of course, move down along with that. And again, just last example here between 2010, indicator flipping back to bullish and remaining bullish throughout this entire period. Bullish, bullish, bullish. Of course, COVID was a whipsaw for many, many reasons, a very different market environment, just completely extraordinary, unlike anything we've seen throughout history. So we'll leave that out of the picture. But here in October of 2020, it told you, hey, we're back to risk on again. The unemployment rate is falling very aggressively. Perhaps it's time to look to the upside on the S&P 500. And that's exactly what happened following that reading. And today we remain in a falling unemployment rate market environment with the unemployment rate clearly still trending down, clearly being below the 16 month moving average. So that's very nice. That's some good visual charting, but I will give you uh, the opposite side of the argument right here with this chart because we crunched the numbers a little bit and compared the period of 1949 to the 1990s by the way, if you appreciate anything that I said in this video so far, don't hesitate to smash that like button. It does make the effort and the time that is put into making these videos, it makes it really worthwhile. So it is very much appreciated. So very simple chart here. You can clearly see since 1990. So that's the chart that I just showed you here uh, since 1992, where it worked beautifully. S&P 500 returns when the unemployment rate was above the moving average were extremely low, almost 0% returns, while returns were exceptional when the unemployment rate was below the moving average, right? You can see that difference, big, big gap since the 1990s. It's really been all about about the unemployment rate. If you take a look at the data since 1949, uh, it's a completely different question where the data is a lot less conclusive, meaning there were a lot more periods where the unemployment rate was rising and the stock market was actually performing well and vice versa. There were periods where the unemployment rate was declining and the market was declining. So what's that all about? Well, if you want my opinion, I think it's all about inflation. I don't think it's it's much more complicated than just see, okay, hey, you know, what happened throughout 2022? Inflation have brought down the stock market. And so despite the fact that the economy has been strong, or at least the labor market has been strong, and you know, there has not been many reasons for a lot of stress in the financial system, apart from the fact that we have rising rates at a tremendous pace. Well, you've seen the stock market go down. And so that's similar to other periods. 
since 1949. For example, 1966 right here, 1966. Look at what happened to the stock market here. It was falling right there as the unemployment rate was also falling. So what was that about? Well, let me put up inflation on top of this chart and you'll quickly understand, wow, inflation was rising here and being a headwind to the market. So we've switched from an environment where it's not about the unemployment rate anymore. It's also about inflation. And by the way, go and take a look at our website at gameoftrades.net. It's brand new. Uh, we have a lot of very cool features uh, that we've added that we think are essentially going to help individual investors navigate this market, whether that's actually looking at the stock market or cryptocurrencies, uh, right? precious metals, commodities. We look at all assets across the board and across the globe uh, to understand where the opportunities are. And we try to communicate that as clearly as possible. And this is exactly the type of uh, analysis that we do on the website. And that's taken into account and funneled uh, into our buy and sell ratings and our model portfolio. Apologies for this messy chart, but I think it was needed for you guys to really understand everything. Now here, let's take a look at everybody's favorite part, which is the short term. And I do mean that sarcastically, because I think if you want to be successful as an investor in the long run, you have to have an investor's mindset. And that includes having a lot of patience. But nonetheless, we can take a look at what's been happening uh, on the S&P 500. So clearly we have uh, this breakout of this downtrend, which if you saw uh, the last video that we posted on YouTube, intermarket analysis was suggesting this would be broken. Now, uh, all eyes are on the 10 year yield on the 10 year yield that did break down this short term uptrend line here and is currently moving down. So that's a tailwind to the market, right? Remember this period here between June and August of 2022, that was a monstrous S&P 500 rally throughout those few months as uh, conditions, financial conditions were easing because the market was pricing in uh, a less hawkish Fed than the Fed woke up at the Jackson Hole meeting and said, okay, this is not good. Financial conditions are easing too much. So we have to get a lot more aggressive in our talk. And so that triggered this rally here. So the Fed is gonna be speaking tomorrow. And so let me quickly give you an overview of how I see the market right now. I think equities right now, if we put the inverse of the 10 year yield to see that relationship between the stock market and bond yields, you can see that the equity markets have front run this speech from the Federal Reserve by quite a bit relative to what the bond market has been pricing in. I wouldn't say this is dangerous, but this is something to be aware of that uh, a lot of the times that the market has front run things and gotten very optimistic, uh, like for example, this reading here, if you remember, if you were back here, this was right before a CPI release and the market was getting very optimistic, like, hey, this CPI reading is going to show inflation is breaking down and that was not at all the case. And so that triggered a move down, but bond yields were, saw right through that. If the Fed is incredibly aggressive, they make absolutely no mention of progress on slowing down the economy, on slowing down inflation, and on their progress regarding the tightening of financial conditions so far. If they don't mention any of that, you could see this type of retracement, a quick snap back to these levels of support. I wouldn't say necessarily a lower low on the market, but you could see a retracement of a little bit of that optimism. That's what I'd say the risk is on the market because equities have been front running things over the past few weeks. Now, I don't know what the Fed is going to come out and say. And I want to be very clear on that. I'm not pretentious enough to think that I know what they're going to come out and say. What I can tell you is if they make a mention, if they even mention the fact that they've made progress on the inflation front, that they've made progress on the tightening of financial conditions and on the cooling down of the economy, on the job market, which are all true. If you've been following some of our work at gameoftrades.net, you'll know that these are all things that the Fed has already uh, made a lot of progress on and could very much mention in their next meeting. If they do mention that, I think we're going straight back up to 4,100 points very, very rapidly. I think that's the setup here in the short term. Uh, in any case, whether that happens this week or over the next few weeks, 
I think that's the direction we're heading in. Uh, and you can read this article here that does a great overview of that, of, of why we think that right here uh, that we posted on October 27th, global bond yields are warning a Fed pivot. I think that did a great job of uh, highlighting all of that. And if you want to review all our work from the past month, you can also check out the monthly recap that picks all the most important points and charts of our research of the past month. So that's about all I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button and click on that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now, in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.